Uh, this talk is about type 2 diabetes, and what we're going to talk about is uh, it's called etiology and reversibility because this is kind of a whole different way that we approach uh, type 2 diabetes, which is different from the way we've approached it uh, before. And what are really, uh, you have to understand what really causes the type 2 diabetes in order to reverse the disease, and that's something we've never really talked about before, which is reversing the type 2 diabetes. And this is the uh, paper it comes from. It's called the Twin Cycles Hypothesis of Type 2 Diabetes. And it was published in Diabetes Care uh, by Dr. Taylor in the UK. And it's quite complicated, so we're going to take it through kind of very slowly. And the thing you have to understand about what causes the diabetes is that there's actually two uh, phases of type 2 diabetes. So this is taken. Uh, from the diagnosis. So if you go look back, here's the time of diagnosis. And if you go back in time, you can see that there's two distinct phases of diabetes. There's the slow rise in the blood sugars, and that really corresponds to the increase in insulin resistance that develops. But then, just before the diagnosis of diabetes, you actually get a very sudden spike up. And that actually reflects the beta cell dysfunction, which is the pancreas all of a sudden can't produce quite enough of the uh, insulin and the blood sugars really spike up. And you have to understand what causes these two phases of uh, diabetes in order to really reverse it. So I'm going to start off with a case. So this is a case of Margaret. Um, we're going to have a chance to talk to her afterwards. And she had been diagnosed with diabetes for 27 years. And she started insulin about eight years ago, and she was really desperate by the time I had seen her. She had gained about 100 pounds uh, after she started the insulin, and she said some months it felt like she was putting on 10 pounds a month. And when I saw her in the office, she could barely drag herself in. She had no energy, she couldn't move. Um, yet she'd go to the, the, you know, her doctors and say, you know, I can't take this anymore. She tried to lose weight, but no matter what she ate and no matter what she did, the weight kept coming on and coming on and coming on. And that's an experience that we see with a lot of people who are on high doses of insulin. The insulin makes you gain a lot of weight. In order to keep her blood sugars controlled, she wound up on 120 units of insulin a day, which is a fairly high dose, um, as well as 2 grams of metformin uh, per day. So we talked to her about the, um, you know, how we're going to reverse the diabetes, and she started on the program, and about three weeks later, we had taken her off of all her insulin. We also took her off of her metformin, and her A1C, as you see, didn't shoot up. It went from 7% to 6.6%. Her blood sugars were averaging between 5 and 6 off of all the medications. And for all intents and purposes, her diabetes was reversed. She had lost 64 pounds in the process and 7 inches off of her waist. So it's been about 6, 8 months now, and her husband, uh, who's also here, uh, saw her doing so well, he started the program as well. <laughs> so he started on 80 units of insulin, and we're still working with him. He's down to about uh, 10 to 20, and really feeling very good. And what that demonstrates is that this is actually not a disease that's chronic and progressive. This is a disease that's completely reversible, but not only that, very quickly reversible. Because now, Margaret comes in and she's like, you know, you can't stop her. She has so much energy. Like, it was amazing how she was before uh, compared to how she is now. And these are really the two big lies of type 2 diabetes. This is the stuff that we tell patients, which is simply not true. So the two big lies, the first one is that diabetes is a chronic progressive disease. We're taught this in medical school. We teach this to our patients. We basically say, you know, you have type 2 diabetes. You'll have it for the rest of your life get used to it. But it's not true. It's actually not true in any sense, which means it's a big lie. The other big lie that we tell ourselves is that lowering the blood sugar is the primary goal of the therapy. So we focus almost exclusively on how we're going to lower this blood sugar, right? 
So if you need to take 200 units of insulin a day to keep your blood sugars down, well then by God, that's what you're going to do because that's what you need to get better. But the truth is that that's not the actual disease. The disease is about high insulin resistance. So the therapy really has to be directed at insulin resistance and not the blood sugar. That was only the symptom. When we talk about the, um, you know, the, the, the first myth, which is that it's a chronic progressive disease, that means it can't be cured. And this is actually not true. And you can easily show that type 2 diabetes is reversible. And they've done that, of course, with many different cases. So I'll present three cases. Uh, all of which are real patients, and you'll see that this is not a chronic progressive disease at all. So you can take bariatric surgery, and there's many studies of bariatric surgery. I had a patient, he was a long-standing diabetic who was morbidly obese. He underwent bariatric surgery, which is, you know, also called stomach stapling, where they cut your stomach into the size of a walnut, so you really you just can't eat. He started off on 500 units of insulin a day, and really after a month of, after the surgery, he was on zero. So his diabetes was pretty much gone. And this is well known to happen actually. We have multiple studies that show that this type of surgery cures diabetes. So this study published in the New England Journal of Medicine shows that when you look at intensive medical therapy, well, at the end of the day, at 12 months, they're really just on as much medication as they used to be. But if you do bariatric surgery, well, what happens is that very quickly they come off of all their diabetic medications. And there's two different types of surgery. There's the Rouen-Y bypass and the sleeve gastrectomy, both of which do very well. You can also do this thing called gastric banding, which is where you put a, like a belt around your stomach on the inside and tighten it so you can't eat. And they also do very well. So their weight comes down, but the blood glucose very quickly, over a matter of weeks, goes back down to normal which means that they're reversing their diabetes. Another way to go is fasting. So uh, this is uh, another patient of mine who had diabetes for more than 10 years. And we started him on a regimen which included fasting. And after 50 pounds, he came off of all his insulin. And really, you know, a year and a half later, he's still off of all his insulin and he's doing very well. So again, here's another case of somebody who's lost a lot of weight and his diabetes went away. Well, that's very interesting because I thought there was no cure. I thought this was chronic and progressive. But clearly it's not. And even after so many years, and even as, uh, you know, on 500 units of insulin a day, these diseases are curable. And in fact, the fasting in the treatment of type 2 diabetes was mentioned almost 100 years ago. So this is a diabetologist by the name of Elliot Jocelyn, who's probably the most famous diabetologist in history. And he writes in the Canadian Medical Association Journal in August of 1916, so pretty close to 100 years ago, that temporary periods of undernutrition are helpful in the treatment of diabetes will probably be acknowledged by all after these two years of experience with fasting. Um, back then, of course, there was really no drug therapy. There was no insulin. There was no other thing. So fasting was one of the kind of well-recognized treatments. And he says, the practice observed by many clinicians of the old school who advantageously fasted their diabetics one day a week have given the cue to intermittent fasting. So these things are not things that were simply made up. These things were known almost for 100 years.